Not a lot of times I get a keyboard that comes across my desk that just makes me awestruck. Some keyboards, they're beautiful, but they don't type well. Some type really well, but they sound bad. Some sound great, but they have absolutely no features or any character. But once in a while, you get one that has it all, like the goddess of keyboards. And that day, it's today. Introducing the Freya 68 by Wuche Studio. And yes, I did put metal gold keycaps on them because every goddess needs jewelry. Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is Scott K. Yeah, this thing, this Freya, this is one of the best overall keyboards I have seen in a long, long time. Like, it really truly has it all. From like the overall unboxing experience to the actual use, there was not a single step that made me think like, eh. I was so impressed with everything that Wuche threw at the Freya 68. It's been some time, it's been a minute since Wuche Studio launched a new product, right? But now I know why. They took their time, their sweet time, to make sure their next keyboard is gonna arrive and make a splash. So the specific version I have is the Freya Ultra. And not only is it one of the best all-rounders in the custom mech space in this price category in my opinion, it's also very adaptable. This thing could take on so many different options to truly custom tailor your keyboarding experience. And I don't just mean like the typing sound or like the feel. I mean the entire interaction with your keyboard. Let's get started on possibly one of the best keyboards of 2024. And it's only January. So what is Freya anyways? Well, I guess who is Freya anyways, right? She's the Norse goddess of beauty, love, sexuality, fertility, war, gold, and magic. Pretty much all the good stuff. In Greek mythology, she's also known as Aphrodite, right? You might know that. It's maybe a little bit more familiar. Which they have similar characteristics. This concept of a multifaceted goddess relates very well to Freya, especially the Ultra. Like I mentioned before, the Freya, it can take on many different forms. The right screen cluster. It could also be a regular key cluster instead. The left side slider. It can also be a macro pad cluster. The badging. You could swap that out to a different color or design. Do you see where I'm going here? The Freya can really tailor itself to suit your usage. What you can eat, the Freya can do. Unlike a standard review where I like kind of go over every little feature, this is that and this is this, I am actually going to approach this video by highlighting the key points, the uniqueness of this keyboard. Why? Because there are so many that it's gonna, even that will make it worthwhile for you. Let's get started with the overall design. In my opinion, it is gorgeous. It starts with a more standard 65% layout, right? But adds more functional keys and hence, that's why it becomes a 68%. My version here is the black one and you can see that Wuche, they incorporated the gold along with the black, right? And also the polished PVD stainless below, it creates this trifecta of colors going on and it works beautifully together. Small details like this gold edging against the black stands out so well. And the side profile wings design adds so much character and beauty without going too crazy or over the top. And keeping it single, cohesive theme. That's important guys, I talked about that before. The design continues to the back of the keyboard with the angled case showing off that swoopy incorporation of the two different materials. And the beauty below as well with the spectacularly polished PVD steel and a nice frail weight right in the center of it. If you do get the version right with the slider like I have right here, you get the gold accents and this nice gold slider that is also smooth as it is pretty. The screen knob also matches the overall color scheme and also matches the slider knob and really creates for a complete look. And yes, the badge, if you don't like the white, you can swap it for a black or gold or whatever to match it overall. Now, what about the innovations? Yes, this thing has a lot. Let's start with one of the centerpieces, the screen and the knob. They're one of the same. Yes, this thing is a touchscreen knob. You know what it reminds me of? It's like you literally took a Galaxy smartwatch and they like stuck it right here. I'm pretty sure this is also Android powered as well. So you literally have smooth touch control and you can scroll to reveal some really good information like the time, the date, and the status, weather, your computer hardware status, word per minute to see how fast you're typing, the keyboard status indicator to show you like which layer, what kind of connection you are using, 
whether the caps like is on or not, and more. There's so much more you could scroll through and set, like alarms, timers, nodes, and everything else in between. Now, speaking of connections, it supports USB, obviously, Bluetooth, as well as 2.4 gigahertz wireless. The nice thing is that you can easily manipulate the screen and its content by also using the Wuche Pocket app from your phone, right? This thing actually connects to your keyboard through the phone. Plus, this thing has ability to receive over-the-air updates to gain more and more functions as Wuche adds them more in the future. Are you sure you didn't just like stick a smartwatch on here? That's pretty much what you did, right? <laughs> and if you don't want a smartwatch on your keyboard, it can be swapped to a four-key cluster to keep it simple. On the opposite side, you have this module that can either be a slider or a macro cluster. Honestly, I made it into a slider because it's just so smooth and nice and actually correlates to the exact position of your system volume as default, right? Like middle is 50%, top is 100. Now, let's move to the internals, the core keyboard technology. So Wuchi also adopted the spring mount, but not like the, the leaf mount system that you see pretty prevalently now, but rather a coil system mount where like, kind of unlike what I did in the past, right? They decided to create like more of a parametric load bearing coil support system around the upper and lower inner edges. It's supposed to create a more balanced typing feel and sound, and honestly, it does work. Plus, as you'd expect from a spring-mounted keyboard, it flexes very well, right? Now, let's look at the components, shall we? Like this. Yes, that is a hybrid dual material plate. It has a stiffer but more stable aluminum outer design, while it incorporates a softer PC center to give you a nicer feel over the alphas. Plus, more flex if you want that. I'm not quite sure if anyone else has done this before like this, but like we've seen half plates, right? But this, the possibilities, right? They also use these tiny little silicone bumpers to help control the plate stability, as well as dampen any unwanted vibrations, side vibrations, right? And yes, it has a flex cut PCB with VIA support and hot swap sockets and perky RGB, which actually looks pretty nice by the way, especially when you use like RGB supporting switches, like these Hanami dangles right here. And yes, it comes with a folder full of foam, which you can either use or not. Typical stuff, right? Like the Poron case foam, Poron plate foam, and this case though, thin Poron slash PT sheet instead of like standard PE foam. But if you recall from my previous videos, spring mounted keyboards has, they have an inherent anti-ping and hollowness property, right? So it doesn't really need the foam to mitigate problems. The foam in this situation is used to shape the sound instead. So, I've talked for, I don't even know how long, and like I drooled over this thing for a while, but how does this keyboard keyboard then? But before we do that, a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an online service that helps you print PCBs, do 3D printing, or even CNC machining. If you're an aspiring keyboard designer or whatever else designer, you can take your design and simply upload it to get something made quick. Or if you have the source code for a PCB that you already have and you need a replacement, you can also get that done as well. They can handle all types of PCBs from your simple single layer designs to multi-layer stacks. Beyond PCBs, if you want to try making your own case, PCB Way can machine that as well. Now, a very exciting new service that PCB Way offers, OEM. Instead of just making a single component, you can actually test PCB Way to be an OEM manufacturer and make the whole thing. They can do anything from PCBs to CNC cases to even assembly. And using global manufacturing, they can offer very competitive prices. Is there a keyboard keyboard on the horizon? Well, check out OEM at PCB Way. First of all, yes, let me explain the gold keycaps. They're not just ordinary keycaps here. I had this set of Aki's aluminum keycaps for a bit, and I've kind of held off using it for a while, right? I couldn't find the right keyboard for it because they're like 400 bucks, and I'm not gonna put that on a $100 keyboard, but it was a perfect match for this Freya. It was black and gold, and that gold keycap, it was like jewelry for a goddess, right? Being metal, they're heavier, and heavier also equ equivalent to auto thought, right? Plus when the light hits them, it like truly completes the look package. So the first build is a heavy thock build with all the foams and this crazy keycap set. Also the nice and smooth Hanami dangles from Kinetic Labs. I think they all kind of work together pretty well. Enjoy.
Yes, this build will shake your desk as you type, like a subwoofer. The spacebar on that really emphasizes like the war aspect of the Freya. It sounds like swords clashing. <laughs> You can put the spacebar dampener in there if, if you just want to kind of sound make it sound like a sledgehammer hitting, but that's up to you. I was surprised that I didn't have any fitment issues really with metal keycaps, but it does smudge if you have dirty fingers. So I know, I know. I can't make a thousand dollar build like this and say that this is a representation of this board. I know. So let's go to a bit more normal one like this. What happens when you use standard double shot ABS like DCX keycaps, right? This time, I decided to remove all the foam because springs, you know? How does this sound? Yep, it does sound much more classic this way. And as expected, there is no hollowness or ping or anything like that, reverbs. Good old clean sound. It's also clackier, I would say, right? But I did try one more build. And I think for me, this was my best all around build that I liked. The ABS with just the plate and the case foam, right? No sound modifying sheets. This still delivered a very classic sound in my opinion, but it smoothed out some of the loud poppy spacebar sound a bit. If you like that loud poppy spacebar, take the foams out. If you don't, stick some back in or spacebar modded with butyl rubber, search my channel for it. Yep, that was my favorite. As the Freya, it's not for everybody. It's not cheap at all. The version I have is a higher end ultra with all the fixings, right? And it comes out to around $450 for this kit. The standard Freya itself will start around $329, but as you go up to the ultra and then even a higher version, the collab versions, you're going to see something like closer to 500 bucks for just the kit. But let me tell you, I've seen other keyboards that get closer to that number and not deliver this level of refinement. The Freya is truly one of those keyboards that will sit on your desk and make you awestruck when you take a look at it. And for that, you be the judge whether you want to spend that dollar 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 on this keyboard or not. It's your money. This is my opinion, but if they actually limited this, let's say, and then didn't make that much, then I feel like in the future, this is one of those keyboards that might be like sought after more. Just my opinion. Thanks. Next time.